So I have the great honor, and uh, I, I hope I'm up to the challenge of introducing uh, Solomia Bavrovka, because um, it's, it's really going to be hard in a very short amount of time to uh, speak uh, in a way that I think Solomia deserves uh, of her vast accomplishments and, and the brave, brave work that, that she is doing. Um, you know, conflict and war are humanity's uh, greatest failures, and I think military intervention um, is the last resort, if at all, and I think um, we have areas all around the world right now that are suffering uh, from conflict, but it's, it's in humanity's greatest failure that I think we see some of the shyness, the, the, uh, the, the biggest spark, the biggest light, the biggest um, positive aspect of, of humanity, and I, and I think Solomia is exemplifying that. And in, in her young life, she's done many, many things that brought her to this point. Um, she is a distinguished scholar, uh, she has a, a very uh, in-depth academic background. She's been volunteering in her community in, in Ukraine um, for over 12 years now. And because of her accomplishment, she was recognized by the um, vice prime minister of Ukraine, and she's assistant to the vice prime minister. And when conflict and chaos came to her homeland, um, she needed to do something about it. And she um, has been very involved with trying to alleviate the suffering that the people of Ukraine are experiencing. Everything from helping to find uh, missing people, uh, she had to personally identify uh, or um, notify families that they lost loved ones, um, seeking justice. She was a, a, an ear and a place where people can go that had nowhere else to turn that were, were seeking justice. And Solomia knows that in any violent conflict, what usually happens, or almost always happens, is a downward spiral of increasing and escalating violence. And she also knows that the only truly sustainable way to overcome that and to reverse that cycle is through the most powerful force in the universe, which is forgiveness and reconciliation. But knowing that and being able to do that are two different things, because it, although it is the most powerful force in the universe, it's, it's very, very difficult, uh, and it's only possible during fleeting moments of opportunity, fle fleeting moments where we can, where it is possible to have uh, true reconciliation and forgiveness, uh, and there's many steps that have to go into that, and she's working towards all those steps um, and just doing amazing, amazing work, and at six o'clock tomorrow, Solomir is going to get back on the plane and go to Ukraine and continue her work, and so it is my greatest honor to introduce you to Solomia and to hear her story. Ukraine has been dealing with war, death, and tears for more than 10 months now. History repeats itself. We experienced similar conflicts during World War I and World War II when Ukraine was divided between two empires. Not so long ago, we thought we had learned how to forgive at what reconciliation is. I'm here to ask you to support Ukrainian people in finding that peace again. Ukrainian protests for truly independence began in November 2013. By February, we paid price the lives of the ordinary people, of men and women, now to be remembered as the Heaven 100. They were killed by the regime. This led to a foreign invasion in the east and south of Ukraine, and war broke out. We are here talking about reconciliation and peace after conflict, but a lot of you already know that there is no universal recipe for this. Healing the wounds of families who have lost their loved ones is next to impossible. Although time heals, the pain disappears very slowly. Yes, we can and should use the experience of those countries who have had similar long-running conflicts and found reconciliation. But having just returned from the front line by myself, it feels it's too early to speak about reconciliation. Whilst we find on, there is no time to forgive. 
because you don't know who will betray you tomorrow. Yet, in the midst of Ukrainian crisis, humanity exists. Volunteers help the army, work in hospitals, collect money, and more. There is a movement that turns the country and shows soldiers at the front that we are caring about them. In July, I started aid to state bodyguard service in Ukraine initiative on Facebook. Almost every week, we receive packages and food and necessary stuff for bodyguards. In three months, we collected more than 70,000 Ukrainian grievances. I take packages to the combat areas whenever I can, staying with the bodyguards, listening to their stories. Many of them are farmers, engineers, drivers, shop workers, even businessmen. They are ordinary people as you and me. They see they are not forgotten. Other volunteers help the wounded in the military hospitals. Through the Euromaidan SOS initiative, we maintain a list of killed and missing militaries. We take this list to PASA and OSCE sessions to show them that the Russian Federation is a combating party and to record accusations of human rights violations by the separatists and Russian invaders. I hope for and want that this war will end soon. But then we will have to face those Ukrainians who took arms against us. I ask you, how do we do that? It's difficult for us to find dialogue for reconciliation, and we didn't have, even have a common language, and as we see, values, unfortunately. I have always admired Ireland. If we look at its history, we have many things in common. Anger, common sorrow, courage, dignity, the will of freedom. Ireland and Northern Ireland have come a long way down the path of reconciliation. They know how to forgive. After many years, they have peace. It's an ability that comes with time, understanding, and revelation what's important. Right now, I feel it's too early to reconcile or to forgive. But I know for sure that we will need this soon. That's why I came to learn from Ireland's history. Reconciliation is hard. It's too hard. Ukraine needs to learn how to reconcile the differences between neighbors. I'm here to ask all your countries, help us find peace again. War brings nothing but tears, death, and devastation. Help us find this lasting peace again. Thank you on behalf of all Ukrainian people.